When the Berlin Wall fell 20 years ago, there was only one superpower. It was the end of an epoch and hopes for peace in our time. But then came 9-11 and on Thursday, this. 13 people shot at Fort Hood, an army base on U.S. soil, with the alleged killer, a 39-year-old U.S. Army officer, a devout Muslim. I'm Colin Chapman. Welcome to Agenda with George Friedman. Fort Hood is an important place for my own family. One of our children served there for many years with the 1st Cavalry, and some of her friends uh, are still there. Uh, so the first thought is, of course, of those who were killed and wounded. Uh, beyond that, we know that uh, Osama bin Laden and al-Qaeda have been speaking lately about the idea of individual acts of terrorism being carried out. Uh, we don't know that this was the act of a deranged man or of someone who is responding to that. We simply don't know. And it is unrealistic to speculate on the impact until we do. Certainly the most important question uh, in everyone's mind is, is this a one-off or will something else happen? An East German Trabant, that symbol of communist economic failure, driven through Checkpoint Charlie. Germany will be united in peace and freedom. Europe will be whole and it will be free. It was an enormous event. It changed 500 years of history. Uh, for the first time in 500 years, in 1991, uh, no European power was a global power. Uh, only the United States was left as the single global power. We then went into one era in the 1990s when the world thought that geopolitics was gone and that the only thing that really mattered were businessmen. I call it the giddy springtime of the bourgeoisie. They danced happily in the streets. On 9-11, history returned. And we've gone through a period in which the obsession uh, of the world has been the U.S. jihadist war. That war is slowly grinding to an end. And during this end, uh, something new has emerged. The Russians have used the preoccupation by the Americans in the Islamic world as a window of opportunity to increase their own power. And now throughout the region, we see a resurgent Russia beginning to meet resistance from other countries. The lessons are that we should not erect any walls. And now, by the way, new dividing lines are being established once again. We should live peacefully in Europe, this European house with its different doors and windows. It's very interesting to note that the Georgian war began with American exercises in Georgia and Russian exercises in South Ossetia. So not to, for the moment, to imply that any sort of war is coming, but these exercises are serious. Uh, the U.S. is showing its commitment to the Baltics. The Russians are showing its relationship with uh, Belarus. And certainly with each step that's taken, the tensions ratchet upward. Germany, of course, which after the fall of the wall looked west, is now making overtures to Moscow. Germany does not want to be caught in any sort of mini cold war between Russia and the United States. They've had one round, they don't want another round. Uh, they want to be in a position to be friendly with both. They want the benefit of good relationships with the both. And of course the benefits of not having to do very much for those relationships. So Germany uh, thinks it's going to be in a position that it can balance easily between the two. The truth is it can balance between the two, it won't be easy. Hello, I'm Marla Dial with a look at the week ahead. There seem to be more than the usual number of comings and goings this week in Asia. In Japan, the Prime Minister is due to meet on Saturday with officials from Myanmar, while defense officials were planning to host talks on fighting piracy. Chinese Premier Wen Xiaobao is due in Egypt for talks on business and investment ties to Africa. And in Europe, Russian President Dmitry Medvedev sits down with the German and French leaders in Berlin on Monday. It's the anniversary of the fall of the Berlin Wall, but they'll no doubt be discussing issues related to GM's backtracking on the sale of Opel and wider relations with the U.S. Back in Asia, the annual APEC summit gets underway in Singapore, and the presidents of Brazil and Peru will be crisscrossing the region in search of investment and trade deals. We expect a fair amount of attention on the travels of U.S. officials also. U.S. Treasury Secretary Tim Geithner will be in Japan, just ahead of President Barack Obama's talks there near the end of the week. 
Obama is also planning to meet with Russian President Medvedev over arms control on the sidelines of the APEC summit in Singapore next weekend.